what is going down the people of YouTube it is your boy Zary back here from Zary's mobile gaming coming at you today with another video before we jump into the video though I just want to thank all of you out there there we go for helping me hit my goal of 100 subscribers I've been doing this for about a month and I never ever thought that this would be something that I enjoy so much so thank you all and if you haven't subscribed yet there's a little button right down there has the YouTube icon on it click on that so you don't miss out on more great content coming your way so let's get right into it as I talked about in my previous video and if you haven't seen it there will be a card up in that corner that will pop up so you can watch it about where I stand for the upcoming event to unlock Ember so we got our patch yesterday and the event starts in 13 days and 7 hours so we have about three weeks until the event ends for us to get where we need to be. Ember is a 145 shard unlock, just like Solius, so it'll be a 5 star unlock. So we have to go to level 5 to see what they recommend and where we need to be to get this done. So on level 5, it recommends that we have a hero, hero level of 60, an ability level of 6, a gear level of 7+, plus, and runes at level 16. Obviously, we can use only elves. With those goals in mind, we got to keep those in the back of our head. Let's take a look at the first person I'm going to talk about today. And that person is Aurelia. Aurelia is part of the Order faction. She is an elf and she is a healer. So let's talk about what I am going to do to get this character ready for the upcoming Ember event. To be fair, these are just my opinions. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm not telling you that this is how it needs to be done and this is the way you do it and blah 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 blah. I'm not that guy. This is what I'm doing. If you want to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you're doing, awesome. One of the reasons I love hero collectors so much is because of the theory crafting that goes into them, the ability for people to make better teams and be successful with something the other person wasn't. If you think they're crap, tell me in the comments and I'll respond. Let's get started. We're making a video about Aurelia. So you might be saying, Zeri, why the hell is there Nightiel on the screen? Well, Nightiel is the only leader we have for this upcoming event. And to properly look at what and how we should rune and focus on for a character, we need to know what leadership it's under. Nightiel's leadership is invoking the moon, and at a level 1, it gives all allied elves 3% accuracy. So you're probably thinking, why do we need to know that? Because it looks like a pretty generic and bland and crappy leadership ability but as it gains levels you get more and more things what you need to understand is that at level one you're only getting accuracy when you hit level three though it reads all allied elves gain seven percent accuracy upon landing a critical hit restore two percent of their max health and upon landing a fatal blow they restore five percent of their max health so looking at that leadership ability having elves under her leadership that have a high critical chance only increase their survivability my goal of course i would love to get it to level six but that's just not going to happen maybe maybe not but i think i can get the her leadership ability to level five which I gain 15% accuracy and restore 6% of their max health, and on a fatal blow restores 15% of their max health. That's going to increase their survivability quite a bit, and it might let you focus on other secondary runes other than health. So we'll kind of get into that. We're back here to Nightiel. I already have Nightiel to level 60. Check. One thing off the box. Abilities, level 6. Not close to it. Gear, 7+, plus. I got her to level 8. Stars, 3 stars, not checked. Aurelia isn't going to be hard to get to 5 stars. She can also be found in the guild shop, which isn't listed here because she didn't pop for me during the refresh. And she can also be found on Dawn of the Order 2-3 and Rage of Clans 2-9. So there's no reason if you just stay focused on farming those nodes every day and buying her in the guild shop when it pops that you can't get her to 5 star. I'm hoping to get her to 6 star before the event shows up. Now as for gear, I'm not going to touch gear. I'm at level 8. It says 7 plus. So I'm not going to sink much more resources into her gear. The next thing we are going to focus on is going to be her abilities. So if you're unaware of her abilities, we'll talk about them. We'll go over them right now. Way to repeat yourself, Sarah. Magic Arrow. I have her Magic Arrow ability at level 2, and right now it deals 120% of magic damage to an enemy, 40% chance to inflict potency decrease for two turns. The important part of this is it deals 120% of magic damage. 
keep that in mind. Second ability, Mass Heal. Heals all allies for 200% of Aurelia's magical damage at level 2. Again, Aurelia's magic damage. So there's two of two talking about magic damage. Third ability, Star Orb. At level 2, deals 200% of magic damage to an enemy heals the lowest health ally by 50% of the damage dealt. Now the thing with this move is, is you can take it all the way up to level 6 and that increase is only to her magic damage to an enemy not the amount that it heals by. It's always going to be 50% of the damage. Now you're going to do more damage the more it comes up so the healing will increase but it will only always be 50% of the magical damage dealt. Ability 4. She gains 15% magical damage increase at level 2. So going over her ability list, the main thing that sticks out to me is she needs damage, and she needs to be able to survive, she's the healer, and she needs speed, because you want your healers to pop, be able to pop their heals as fast as possible. Now in this composition, there's going to be two healers, her and Sinjil, and they are two different types of healers. She is a mass healer, and Sinjil is a hot healer, a heals over time. You always want your healers to be fast, but by having those two healers and the two different styles of healing in your group, you can sacrifice a little speed to counteract other attributes onto your character. So there's two abilities that I'm going to focus on that I feel are the most important to be successful in this event. You want to pump out as much healing as possible. And yes, this is tied to her magical damage, but the more you increase it, the more it heals. So my goal is to get this to level 4 and the second ability is her passive the power of nature. And the reason this is so important is because the previous three moves all are tied to her magic damage. By sinking scrolls into this ability you improve all three of her other abilities. So this is the most important ability for her. My goal is to get this to level 5. So now we're going to talk about runes. And runes can be confusing and they can be tricky. Where are you going to go? Do you want her maxed out with speed? Do you want to stack her with survivability? So this is what I'm going to do. Her kit, everything she does is based off her magical damage. If you haven't seen my rune video, it's a 10 minute guide to breaking down runes. And right up here on that side of the screen, there's going to be a card. It's 10 minute breakdown of runes. It doesn't tell you how to rune a character, but it tells you the primary stats you can receive. It tells you how to save gold and only level up to a certain level. So if you haven't seen that, and you're still a little shaky about runes, go ahead and check that out. Shameless plug, how can I maximize this character's potential? And I believe I can do that by putting on a damage set. Damage sets are your little sword ones here, and if you put four of them on, you get 20% more damage. So putting an extra 20% damage on her will only benefit all three of her moves. That's four of the six runes I have to put on to a character. And under Night TL's lead, if I get that to level five, we're recovering health for a critical hit. So why don't I give her an extra 8% critical chance by putting on two crit chance runes? So that's the way I'm going to go. As you can see down in the corner, I still need another damage rune, and I'm in no rush to just put something on. I'm slowly farming runes. Good way to farm your runes is every day for your daily objectives. You need you need to spend the energy 10 times in a normal campaign and that is a good spot to go in and do it 10 times and farm runes. The north rune here is only a damage primary. That takes care of that. We can't screw around and try to get something different. The way I am taking into account the secondary abilities is I want speed, I want crit chance, I want damage, and then survivability. In the northeastern rune, you can get four, the main four stats, health, shield, armor, damage, or speed. And of course you want speed. One down the southeastern rune, you can only have armor as your primary, so you want to make sure you're maximizing the secondary abilities here. The southern rune has the four primary health, shield, damage, and armor, but it also allows you to have a crit chance and a crit damage primary. Now I want a crit chance primary, and most people have two dot uncommon runes, so just so you can see, at max level 16, a critical chance primary will give you an extra 6% crit, the healing ability based off of Again, Night Tales lead, match made in heaven. Now for the southwestern rune, you can only have the four primary abilities of shield, health, armor, and damage. Northwestern, 
you can have, again, the, the main four, shield, damage, health, armor, or you could have tenacity and potency. Now, for this character, tenacity and potency don't do anything for me, so I will be looking for a damage primary there. You've seen my Aurelia. You've seen where I'm at. I've made some strides already. I got a couple of the boxes already checked off. You've seen my plan for her and my progression with her. What I am going to do is get her to the point where I want her and stop and move to the next character. That way I stay focused on one character and I'm done. Well, YouTube, that's my take on what I am going to do. Prepare Aurelia for this event. Keep in mind, you got 13 days and 7 hours. If you think I am doing something wrong, give me a comment down below and we'll talk about it. Find me on Discord, shoot me a DM, whatever you want to do. The next installment is Sharp. We will go over his move kit and you can see what I'm doing to prepare myself for Sharp. That's all I got for everybody today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the 100 subscribers. Unbelievable. Be safe. I'm out.